In this video, you'll be learning about mass balances and significant figures. Mass balances are used to weigh known quantities of a sample. It's important that you know how to use a mass balance if you're going to be performing an experiment in which quantitative mass results are required. You might expect to see instructions such as these in your lab manuals. Accurately weigh out approximately one gram of unknown A. To do this, we will show you a step-by-step -step general method that you can use whenever you need to weigh out a sample. Step one. The first step is to accurately weigh the empty weighing bottle in the accurate balance room. Make sure the balance is at level and glass windows are all properly closed. However, if the mass balance is not level, ask your demonstrator or the lab staff for assistance with leveling the mass balance. At this point, press the TAR or zero OT button to zero the scale. After you have tarred the balance, place the weighing bottle on the balance and close the window. Wait until the numbers on the display stabilize and record the mass of the container. Note the number of the balance that you use and make sure you use the same balance throughout the experiment. Step two. Once the empty weighing bottle has been accurately weighed, the next step is to roughly transfer one gram of unknown A to the weighing bottle. To do this, we will need to use the rough balances in the rough balance room. Before doing a rough weighing, we need to check that the balance pan is clean before placing your clean, empty weighing bottle on the pan. Once you're happy that the pan is cleaned, the balance is zeroed or tarred with the weighing bottle on the pan of the balance. This is done so that the mass of the sample can be read directly from the display. Step three, remove your weighing bottle from the balance and transfer some of your sample into the weighing bottle. Never transfer a sample directly into the weighing bottle while it's sitting on the balance's pan. Step four, place the weighing bottle back on the balance and check the reading on the display. If you have not added enough sample, Add some more until the mass is near one gram. It is okay if your mass is slightly above or below one gram. For example, 0.96 grams or 1.05 grams are perfectly acceptable. You do not have to record this value since it is just a rough measurement. Step five, go back to the accurate balance room, zero the balance if the reading on the display is not 0.000 and place the weighing bottle with the sample on the balance. Record the mass of the weighing bottle and its contents. Remember to record to all decimal places shown on the balance, even if the last digit is zero. To determine the mass of the sample that was added to the weighing bottle, simply subtract the mass of the empty weighing bottle from the mass of the weighing bottle with its contents. If in the procedure it says, transfer the sample quantitatively, you do all the steps. However, once you have transferred the sample into another set of glassware, such as a volumetric flask, you would now accurately reweigh the emptied weighing bottle to determine the exact amount of sample that was transferred as some of the sample residue sticks to the weighing bottle. Therefore, to determine the mass of the sample that was transferred, simply subtract the mass of the empty weighing bottle that was weighed after the sample was transferred, which contains some sample residue, from the mass of the weighing bottle with its contents. This brings us to the concept of significant figures. This is a concept that many students struggle to grasp, but hopefully after watching this segment of the video, you'll be able to handle this with ease. If a number is recorded to four significant figures, as is the case here, this means that the first three digits are known with absolute certainty, while the last digit contains some uncertainty. This is the standard convention for reporting scientific measurements. It is important that you do not distort the reliability of your results by adding or taking away any significant figures. To know how many significant figures there are in a value, remember these simple points. Non-zero digits are always significant. Any zeros before a non-zero number are not significant. 0085 is just two significant figures. 0 0.0032, two significant figures. Any zeros between non-zero digits are always significant. 101 has three significant figures. When it comes to zeros after non-zero values, there are two ways of describing significant figures. Take for example the number 24,000. We could either write this as 2.4000 times 10 to the 4, which has five significant figures. Or we could write it as 2.4 times 10 to the 4, which has two significant figures. This is essentially two ways of writing the same number, in which case the accuracy by which we know the number is completely different. There are some rules to remember when performing calculations using experimentally determined values. When performing additional subtraction, consider the number of decimal places in the values you are using. Report the final answer to the lowest number of decimal places. 
Remember that your calculator does not understand the concept of significant figures, so do not blindly copy the numbers from your calculator. When performing division or multiplication, record your answers to the least number of significant figures seen in the values used in the calculation. For example, if we are told that the molar mass of a sample is 58.44 grams per mole, we could calculate the number of moles. When you enter the values onto your calculator, you get an answer of 0 0.0170773. But since the least number of significant figures in the calculations is 3, we report the answer to 3 significant figures and round off the answer to 0 0.0171 moles. Exact numbers such as the number of days in a week or the number of oxygen atoms in a water molecule do not have any uncertainty associated with them and should therefore not be included when considering significant figures. In this video we have covered two crucial aspects. The first being the mass balance, where you will have learned how to use a mass balance correctly using the following steps. You should then get reliable mass measurements during your experiments. However, if you need any assistance, don't hesitate to ask your demonstrator. The second aspect is the use of significant figures. By following the sig fig rules during your calculations, your answers will be reliable and contain the correct inherent error. Please remember sig figs are not only used in your practicals, but for all calculations during your science career.